So I wanted to share something that I stumbled upon with Kubernetes that I think is very important to understand if you're trying to learn how to use it. Basically, it is all around downtime and how do you achieve zero downtime with your rolling deployments? Because by default, you're more than likely going to have downtime for your users unless you actually architect this stuff correctly. So let's start with demoing the issue. I have the K6 library set up for my load testing. I believe this is also supplied by the same company who does like Loki and uh, Grafana. But the idea is you write your load test in JavaScript and you can specify some stages of your load test, right? So the first 10 seconds, I'm going to ramp up to 20 virtual users. You just keep on hitting a status endpoint. And then another 10 seconds after that, I just sustain that 20 virtual users and I keep on hitting my status endpoint. So for the test itself, again, all I'm doing is hitting this get status endpoint over and over and over again. And I'm verifying that I get a status 200 back. So let's let's try this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run my load tests and then halfway through, I'm going to go ahead and just deploy a new update to my pod. Okay. So one way you can do a rolling update or force it is just update any type of environment variable on the pod itself or the, uh, the stateful service configuration. And that'll just roll through all your pods and update them. So just to show you, um, I have my pods running here. And if I were to go ahead and load up Postman, you'll see that if I hit my status endpoint with a git, we get back a status 200. So it's running. We're going to hit this primary set here. Let's just go ahead and run the load test. Okay, you'll see it go down here. It'll ramp up to up to 20 virtual users. And while it's ramping up, I'm going to go ahead and just apply to the cluster. That'll start tearing down my pods. You see that it's terminating. And then you'll see that I'll bring it back online and we'll move on to the next one and update primary one as well. So the issue with doing this is if I go over my load test, you'll see I get a ton of connection reset by peer errors. So this is not good because technically this is like downtime, right? There's users who are trying to connect to your service. They get an error back. Uh, maybe they are already connected. Maybe the TCP socket is already open. It gets disconnected. So obviously not good. How do we fix this issue? How do we actually achieve zero downtime with Kubernetes? Well, let's go ahead and look at my main.go file because this is mainly where you have to kind of consider this stuff. So right now I have some code commented out and basically the way you can make this gracefully shut down, that's the keyword, you have to do a graceful shutdown in your service, whether you're using Go, Node, or whatever, you have to make sure that when a signal comes in from Kubernetes to say, hey, tear this pod down, you do it gracefully. So let me bring this code back. What this is doing is it's running in a subroutine, a, a listener that basically listen for this sig term signal. Okay, and when this signal comes in, we sleep for 10 seconds, and I'll talk about this in just a second, but I'm gonna skip it. But after that 10 second sleep, we go ahead and just gracefully shut down our HTTP library service, right? So you just do server.shutdown, and a server is actually just an HTTP server. So I'm just using the default libraries built in the Go. So you want to make sure that you shut down what this is doing. It's going to go ahead and slowly stop all connections so no people can make requests to your server. And then it's going to let the currently running connections resolve and finish before it moves on to this close channel. So what this is doing is it basically tells this channel to close. And then down here, all of this will wait until all those idle connections close out. So that's kind of how you can do the graceful shutdown. Now let me talk about this sleep because this is also super important and I spent a couple of days trying to figure out why I was still getting connection uh, reset by peer. It turns out when you update your Kubernetes cluster and it starts tearing down your pods, it has an asynchronous process under the hood where it has to actually update the IP tables of your load balancer. So if I go to like my load balancer over here, this is how I'm pointing to that primary set. But behind the scenes, when the pod starts tearing down, this thing may take some time to remove that from the IP tables and the routing rules. And there's a great article that explains all this. I'll actually paste it in the description below. But you'll see that as you initialize the deployment, it will start deleting the pod. And then at some point right here, it'll delete the pod while it's in the middle of updating its IP tables, which will cause a bunch of connection reset by peers errors because the load balancer is still trying to send it uh, send requests to a, a pod that doesn't even exist or isn't even running. So the solution, which honestly, I think this is a giant hack. I wish there's a way to actually like wait for the tables to update or the routing rule to update. And then I can actually start shutting down the services. So adding a 10 second timer just gives Kubernetes some time for all that asynchronous processing to finish up. 
Is 10 seconds too much? Maybe. Is it too little? Maybe. I don't know. I'm still kind of concerned about this code. It seems like it's just an arbitrary number, which makes me nervous. But anyway, let's show this code demo now. So I'm going to go back to my primary node and I'm going to switch this back to a different version. So let's fix it back to 10. And uh, I do need to deploy this real quick. Um, a second thing I should point out is that there's something called a readiness probe option you can pass to your spec. And what this is doing is it tells Kubernetes, hey, there's a status endpoint that you can continuously check so that when a new pod is coming online, that's when you know for sure that it's ready to accept connections. So it's good to have this because otherwise, how does it know that you can actually route traffic to this pod? So you need to make sure you add this. And there's also another one called liveness check or a liveness probe, which is kind of the opposite. It just runs a check against an endpoint or runs a command to know is your service down is your service like not working anymore and if it's not it'll go ahead and just restart it for you but i don't think the liveness probe is important for what i'm trying to fix here all right so let's get the pods and now everything is deployed with that fixed version of the code that i talked about and let's go and just update some environment variables and then i'm going to go ahead and just kick off the load tests okay this will ramp up the virtual users and then when it's getting to a high point let's just go ahead and redeploy so let's just do an apply I want to show you that it's terminating the pods but then going back to the load test you'll notice that we don't get any type of connection reset by peer errors okay so got 100 percent 200 status codes everything is good so i spent multiple days trying to debug this um again i assume kubernetes had this rollout deployment strategy which didn't allow downtime but but it turns out it's a lot more complicated and I, should I dare I say hacky under the hood because of the asynchronous nature of all this stuff. You definitely want to read through this and understand this. Otherwise, you're going to have the same issues that I demoed in this video. All right, that's about it. If you guys enjoyed watching, give me a comment and like and subscribe. And also, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to talk to me directly or just hang out with some other web developers. Have a good day and happy coding.